Hi again. Um, I've had some people contact me and ask, what do I do if I don't have any elastic? Elastic is not widely available right now. Uh, Joann's has it on back order, so does Amazon. So if you want to make a mask but you don't have elastic, these are some options. Um, option one, ready-made. You could use shoelaces. What you want is a tie coming from each corner that's about 18 inches long. So a single shoelace can cover two of those strings. So a pair of shoelaces would take care of one mask. If you don't have that, you could use ribbon. Um, this was a tie that I found from something that was left over like a cord. Or um, you could use bias tape. This is a double fold bias tape, but you can see it's flat and cotton so it would wash up just fine and it would tie just as easily but i am going to show you if you don't have any of these things on hand how to do it if you just had a fabric and you want to make your own fabric tie so what i'm going to do is take a piece of the cotton that i've used in the past and i'm measuring two inches again you don't need a fancy ruler you don't need a um sharp edge rotary cutter just two edges and i'm going to rip just like i did with the mask um, then I'm going to head over to the ironing board because I'm going to turn this two inch wide strip into a half inch wide finished edge tie. So I take my two inch strip over to the ironing board and I'm going to make sure it's pressed nice and flat first. I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise because I need to know where the center is. So I'm going to give it a quick press in half lengthwise and then I like my raw edges hidden if you're not fussy what you could do is just fold it in half again like that and top stitch um, I'm always afraid things are gonna come undone in the wash though so I like to fold the raw unfold it open you can see my pressing line I'm gonna fold the raw edge in to that pressing line Watch your fingers. And I'm gonna do that all the way down, putting that raw edge on the inside and hiding it. That way it won't fray in the wash. I'm gonna do the same thing with the opposite raw edge. I'm gonna fold it in so the two raw edges are in the very middle. They don't need to overlap. In fact, you really don't want them to overlap. Leave a little bit of space because when you go to fold this closed, you want to have a little bit of room in that crease. So now my raw edges are in the middle. One more time with the iron, I'm going to fold this in half again, fold to fold. And that's my original fold line there. And now <clears throat> what I have is all of my raw edges hidden inside. And my next step is going to be to head over to the machine so I can stitch this and seal it closed. And so at the machine, I'm gonna put this in with the flap side closest to the needle so that I can catch all those raw edges inside. Um, you would probably be safe to just match it up with the very edge of the presser foot, depending on how comfortable you are sewing to the edge. I'm gonna go all the way down to the end of the line. And then I'm going to insert that into the edge of my mask using the same mask guide pattern that I did on my last video. I'm going to insert this at the um, top edge, probably flush with that raw part, honestly, fold it down. And then that mark, first mark is gonna meet the second mark when I go to sew and I will be back in business like usual. Um, if that feels too wide, you can always cut your strip so it's more narrow or you can fold it at the beginning so that you have room for that pleat. Um, either technique would work. Um, I thought the wider straps would be good to be less likely to tangle, um, but it is totally up to you.
I'm just going to secure that tie at the end. And then I'm going to do, well, actually, I'm going to fold that over because we don't want that to be seen. There we go. And then I'm going to make my pleat with that mark meeting this mark and just sew right down the line. And then I should be good to just keep going with my pleats just like we did with the elastic. Doesn't really change the mask construction. It just changes that step with the elastic. And then when you get down here, you still have that pocket opening in the mask. Um, we're not gonna loop this back because we don't want <laughs> that to close off. We wanna leave this open to tie. So I would take another tie and insert it here. So here I've grabbed another tie, prepared another one. I'm gonna tuck it right inside that fold, maybe half an inch or so. Um, there we go. And then continue sew to the edge. Back stitch, and then when you get to the end, you can spin that around, come back across, and then you have two ties that you can use instead of elastic. So hopefully that will help you if you find yourself needing a mask and having no elastic.